Who did you support when you came to this debate? My name is J.J. Miller, and I'm from Garland, Texas, and I came in here supporting Mr. Dewhurst. Um, for me, it's an experience issue. It's, I think, you know, this is, this is August in baseball season, and the Texas voters are looking at um, who are they going to call up to the majors from the minors, and we've got a guy who who bats 230, and he's not your best batter, but he's not your worst, and he's got nine seasons under his belt. Um, he makes a few errors out in the field, but most of his most of his fielding works, and so you've got r somebody reliable, and then we've got somebody who, you know, swings 350 in the batting cages, and that's great, but how do you play the game, you know? I think Mr. Dewhurst can hit 230 on the road. He can hit 230 at home, and, and he's demonstrated that, and that's what we need. We need some experience. Are you we okay with 230? No, but, you know, I'm, what I'm saying is, you know, that still produces, and that's still going to get runs, and that's still going to get you on base. And when you can do it on the road, under pressure, you know, that matters. And so we don't know how Mr. Cruz performs under pressure you know, in the elected office when you're playing the game. And I think, I think that matters when you're going to the majors. Is there a policy issue that is paramount for you? I think the, the energy uh, issue is paramount. I think whether it's, it's uh, natural gas or oil, domestic drilling. Um, but yes, I think it's, it's important that we become more energy independent. And did you feel that both of the candidates answered that adequately, or one better than the other? I thought they answered it adequately. Okay. My name is Anna Nelson, and I'm from Dallas, Texas, and I came in supporting Mr. Dewhurt. The reason why I support Mr. Dewhurt is, uh, for one, number one, I know him very well, and he's very straightforward with the answer. And one thing about me is that he's truthful in everything he said. And the facts that he gives during the periodic time is that, they are true facts, not something that you would put on in front of an audience. And so, you know, whether we have checked it or not checked it, I have checked everything from the beginning. I'm with the first Republican club. I've been with the uh, Republican club for a pretty good while. I've been in behind the scenes. And I have checked into every candidate that he is. But, but Mr. Duhurt, when I was in legislative, uh, everything that he was saying, I had the paperwork. And I go by black and white. That means that it have to be the facts of the things that should be laid on the table. Now, you in the videotape that we showed said that you're very interested in Medicare and Social Security issues and how they would apply to seniors. Yes. We talked a little bit about Social Security. Did you hear anything in what the candidate said that impressed you or concerned you? What concerned me was the Social Security and also because it's, it's about a zero. I work in Washington with a lady uh, on the board for Social Security. And the things that they send me has been very, you know, irrelevant to the, uh, the facts of Social Security. If we cut down the budget, if we straighten the budget, like he was saying, it, it, it would work. Uh, for my grandchildren or your children's coming up now, you know, it's, will it be there or will it not be there? So it's a lot that I see that need to be cleared up. And I think Mr. Duhurd and his uh, concern for everybody is the concern of helping you and to see it through. What do you think the difference is between the two of them? The, oh my goodness, you got me there, haven't you? Okay, the difference between the two of them is I don't like to judge, but the difference is Mr. Duhurd puts, he was very calm and collected. Second of all, he didn't put no kind of uh, debating part, like when I debate, you know. Uh, Mr. Cruz, uh, he's he was very intelligent in the facts and things, but he seemed like he was playing a role and uh, like, you know, here it is and stuff. Uh, Mr. Dewhurst was very respectful, and he let him talk and let him finish. Mr. Cruz kept continuous, but he, you know, they were both of them very gentlemanlike and work together as a team to try to explain it and make sure it's clear. And Mr. Duher was very distinct and clear enough facts. Tim Nealon, Las Colinas, uh, Dallas County. Uh, we're, uh, you came in? Yeah, I came in as, as Leaning Dewhurst. Uh, but boy, I've, I've 
got to say I was very, very impressed with, with Ted Cruz and his, his debating skills. And in my heart, I very much agree with everything Ted Cruz stands for. And, 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 and I agree with everything the Tea Party, pretty much everything the Tea Party stands for, too. My problem is I'm just, the last three and a half years have just worn me out. And, and what I'm worried about with, with, with folks that are so animately set in their position is that there, I know, I don't know, I don't understand them, but I know on the left, they've probably got just as many people that are as animately dug in on their side. And I'm just worn out. At, at some point, we've got to come together. And, and I don't want to compromise our values, but there's got to be a third way in there somewhere. And I'm as right-wing conservative as they come. But, but I'm just tired of the, of the way things are right now. And we, we've, I'm worried that if too many people go to Washington and say, I've dug in, I'm going to fight, 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 and I'm not going to give an inch. Well, I know there on the left, they've got as many people saying the same thing. We don't have that much time left. So you're concerned uh, about the gridlock. I am. And, and I, I certainly don't want to see my taxes go up. I, I, my overriding issue, I've actually got two, but the biggest one is the debt. I, I think that we just are spending ourselves into oblivion. I certainly believe with all my heart that the problem is spending. It's not a revenue problem. The government is overspending. But the problem is, too, that there's a bunch of people on the other side that believe just as heartily that the same thing, that they believe there's not enough revenue. And what do you think the difference is between these two candidates? You know, they're they're both look like good candidates. And, and quite frankly, on August 1st, I'll get up and I'll be happy voting for either one of them. I just think that Dewhurst, I, I'm still kind of leaning toward him. The one thing he did say is means testing on Social Security. I'm adamantly opposed to means testing. I, there's got to be, there, something needs to happen with Social Security. But, but I can see that he's at least willing to get out there and alienate some, some conservative or some people to find a solution. There's got to be a third way um, somewhere in there. And I, I know I'm coming off as confused as I'll get out, but I just don't think we can, at this stage of the game, go in locking ourselves down to a position and not be willing to at least entertain you know, some solutions. I thought, for instance, the Simpson-Bowles Commission came up with some really fairly mm -hmm. decent ideas. I didn't like this the, is for, for Social Security. Yeah, for Social mm -hmm. Security, for the debt, for everything. For uh, I didn't like the idea of them saying, "Hey, maybe we'll give get another dollar of tax revenue." I didn't like it, but you know what? If we if we can get three dollars for spending cuts uh, for every dollar of revenue, you know, I'll bite my tongue and deal with it. As long as the as the revenues and the tax cuts happen at the same time, I don't like those deals where we're going to increase the revenue now and. Mm -hmm. and do the tax cutting you know you a like year from now okay. wherever it starts it starts both revenue and tax cuts start at the same time uh, my name is Johnny Lopez and I'm from uh, Irving Dallas County and you came here supporting who Ted Cruz and did you see anything that changed your mind or do you still feel firmly about how you not only you did in? I not see anything I, I came away uh, more committed to Ted Cruz I understand how people might think that uh, he was putting on a show or that he was putting on an act, but to me it's the compassion, it's the energy, it's the commitment that he is putting into this race and that I think he'll take to Washington. I don't like compromise, I don't like consensus, but I know one thing for sure, he will stand for what I believe as a conservative. And I really, really think that when he says that he will go there with the intentions of reversing Obamacare, he will. I, on the other hand, hear Mr. Dewhurst say the same thing, but he has been a consensus builder. He has been a compromiser. And I'm afraid when it comes to those issues, that's how he's going to do. He's going to step across the aisle. And I, I'm, I'm not for stepping across the aisle. I'm saying conservatives are in charge, and I'm saying let's take it all the way. 
May I ask, because I, I know that when you were interviewed at the convention, you talked a little bit about immigration. Yes. Did you come away from the convention supporting the party's platform for a guest worker program, or do you think that was a bad decision? I think that was an excellent decision. I, I, I know that no platform, no party can represent me 100%, but I agree with that part of the platform that they changed. I certainly do. And when I spoke about the immigration issue, my whole concern was that, yes, we have to seal the border, and yes, we have to keep that traffic from coming across. But to me, we're focusing too much on the individual and not enough on those reasons why those individuals are coming over here. Now, neither of, these here candidates, neither of the candidates tonight said they supported a guest worker program. I understand, and that's the reason I say nobody's going to represent me 100%. Okay, but I do support that, and uh, I I I, ju I just believe that uh, uh, Mr. Cruz will uh, more closely uh, mirror my feelings and my uh, voice when it comes to voting on the issues. Is there a single issue that's most important to you? Yes, Obamacare. It is the most important issue to me. Yes, unemployment. Yes, the economy is bad and all that. But I'm at that stage in my life that I'm worried about health care. Social health care has not worked in Europe, it has not worked in Canada, and it will not work here. That's the reason all these people come from the other countries here to receive their care here. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. Last but definitely not least, your name please and where you're from? Debbie Georgiatis, and I'm from Dallas, Texas. And I came here as a cruise supporter, and I'm coming away even far more strongly a cruise supporter. I do want to say one general thing, which is that whichever of these candidates wins the Republican nomination, it's really important for our party to get behind the winner of this race, of this primary, and support them in the fall. And it's, it's very important because we need a strong Republican presence in the U.S. Senate. So whoever wins get behind them, but I'm a strong cruise supporter. And I've actually been to, I'm very politically active, been to many, many debates and listened to when there were many more people in the race. And one thing I did not appreciate was Mr. Dewhurst really basically never attending almost any debates the whole time. And I, I think that was not the way a American election should happen. I think there should, that he should care and want to be in the debates. Um, in terms of why I support Mr. Cruz so strongly, I think where we are as a country in America today, we are radically in debt. We are adopting policies that are very similar to Western European socialism. So we're not in a normal place in American history. And while the Senate traditionally requires decorum and, part and people who reach across the aisle, we need passion and strength and leadership in the candidate we choose. We are not going to be well served choosing a deal maker, a compromiser, because of where we are in our history in America. I'm, I'm very concerned about the country, so I want to see a strong fighter. Um, I also, generally speaking, think that experience is a good thing, and experienced politicians can be a good thing. But in this case, experience in politics always leads you to learn compromise. We've seen it with senators and Congress and we send to Washington for long periods of time. It's just the environment of Washington. You're pushed to compromise from the start. And I, I don't think we need that right now. Um, I also, the issues I care a lot about, the Constitution I think is vital. I want Obamacare to be repealed. I want a sense of someone going there who understands the Constitution, will fight for what the standards are um, that it stands for. Another big thing I wanted to mention is I support, I think it's a good indicator of the value that Ted Cruz will bring that so many conservative leaders all across the state and all across the country have come out to support Ted Cruz, the leading conservatives in the U.S. Senate, the ones that are standing and leading the fight to, against Obamacare are all supporting Ted Cruz. And I don't think that's a minor thing. They are careful in the way they choose their endorsements. To me, that's a big signal, unless you want to get deeply involved in policy and do a lot of studying, they are a good signal of, because they'll look closely at candidates before supporting them, it's a good signal. He's a really the conservative guy. I don't, I, I don't want a moderate right now. I think we need a conservative. And I don't, I don't actually think Mr. Dewhurst's record reflects the conservative label that he characterizes himself with.
So what I'm hearing really is that most of you are voting on that issue or those issues that you kind of espoused when we said what is most important to you and that is what you perceive as character, what you perceive as integrity, and what you perceive as a general philosophy that the candidates have as opposed to specific issues. Is that right, pretty much? Yeah. Okay.